This tutorial is on the principles of data collection and we're looking at a, bit, a little bit of terminology at the beginning and then seven different fairly normal sampling methods. So first of all some terminology. The population is all the individuals or items, don't have to always be people, that are being studied, studied and could possibly be sampled. So that's the population. The sample is the size of group that is actually being studied or asked to, rep to respond to a survey. The sample will normally be smaller than the population. Now all samples have some variability. Not all samples will have exactly the same characteristics. For example, let's say that your department or ministry of uh, natural resources wants to know the average size of trout in a lake. So that let's say they catch 100 trout, tag them, measure them, put them back in the lake, and then they'll recapture some of them, and then they can tell what the average size of fish is in the lake. It's called capture recapture. Now, if somebody else, you know, just tomorrow or the week before, catches 100 fish, they won't get exactly the same average length. There will be some variation. So in any two or more samples, there will always be some variability. Uh, one way we get the variability to be small so that uh, different samples have pretty much the same characteristics is you make sure your sample size is, is large enough. If you're only sampling two or three or five things, it's not as good as sampling 200 or 300 or 500. So the larger the sample, generally, the more reliable it is. That'll, it'll represent the population. Now, a census is when you sample the entire population. Every, everyone in the entire country, for example. So in, uh, I live in Canada. Our census, they're looking at sampling all 36 or so million people. So for uh, the purpose of a census, the population would be all the people in the country. So here's some normal sampling methods. And one of the simplest is a simple random sample where you randomly select people or items to survey. So for example, you place all the names of people in a hat and you randomly, without looking, pick 20 of them. That's an example of a simple random sample. Or we could, if we could make it a little bit more technological, uh, you could use a computer. You could put everyone's social insurance number in, in Canada, S, the capital S-I-N isn't SIN, like doing something bad. It stands for, stands for social insurance number. And put those all in a computer and have the computer randomly pick 20 of the numbers. Another example, another way to sample is called a systematic random sample. So you place all the people or items in some kind of an ordered list and you randomly pick a starting point and then you uh, so let's say you call uh, a certain number n and you pick every nth name on the list so for example i'm going to bring my calculator over here so let's say you had a hundred people and you wanted a sample of size let's say 20. so if you divide that by 20 that gives you five so if you start somewhere and you pick every fifth name on the list that will give you a sample of size 20. That's, that's a systematic random sample. Uh, stratified random sample is you select a sample with the same characteristics as the population. So for example, let's say that a company has, has three different uh, areas where it has its workforce. So let's say 20% are in District A, 50% are in District B, and 30% are in District C. So then you would want to design a sample that has 20% from District A, 50% from District B, and 30% from District C. So if you wanted, let's say, let's say you want a sample of, let's say, 400 individuals, then we would go times 0.2 for District A, and 400 times 0.5, the 50% for District B, and then 400 times 0.3 for District C. And so the 80 from District A, 200 from District B, and 120 from District C would give you that 400 people. And it would be representative from the population because the sample would have the same population density or characteristics as your workforce. Uh, number four, a cluster random sample. You divide the population into groups or clusters, and it might already be in certain groups or clusters. You don't, might not have to, to actually physically do that. And you randomly select some of the clusters and then, then sample everyone in those clusters. So for example, let's say a school board has 20 high schools. 
you randomly select five of the high schools and then survey every one in those five high schools. So that's a cluster random sample. And one of the main differences between the cluster and the multi-stage next is in the cluster, once you've got your groups at the end picked, you select everyone in them. That's not true with the multi-stage. In a multi-stage random sample, you divide the population into groups or clusters, so that part's the same as the cluster one, and then randomly select some of the groups, that part's the same too, but then, uh, so it's multi-stage, there's more stages. So each group will have subgroups, so you randomly, randomly select some of those groups and then randomly select parts of those final groups. You know, maybe you want 10% of each of them or something like that. So for example, let's say a school board, where the same example is four here, but just to differentiate between the two, has 20 high schools. You randomly select five of the high schools, okay, but then to make it truly multi-stage, in each school you randomly select two grades. And then you randomly select 30 students from each of those grades. So you notice you're only selecting part of them. That's what makes it multi-stage and not the cluster. Now, six and seven are quite different than the first five. Uh, a convenience sample is you sample only people who are conveniently accessible. So for example, uh, you go to the mall and you survey the first 20 people you see. This method is not particularly reliable, although it is fast and it's very cost efficient. It's a very cheap way to, to get people's opinions, but not terribly accurate a lot of the time. Number seven, uh, a voluntary sample is you allow people to participate or not. Uh, for example, a local radio station asks for callers to comment on a new, new local bylaw. So this can often be heavily biased because only those people who have a vested interest are going to bother to call in or opt into the survey. So again, the voluntary is quick and it doesn't cost much money at all, but it might not be reliable. Reliable mean it might not be representative of what the whole population thinks. That's what you want. You want your sample to be representative of the population. If your population is 100,000 people and you survey 1,000, well, you want the, the opinions of that 1,000 people to be the same as or pretty close to the entire population. Otherwise, it's called a biased sample. And it's, it's pretty useless if you're trying to figure out what the whole 100,000 people think if the opinions of that 1,000 aren't the same as the whole population. So that's a little bit about some principles of data collection and some common different kinds of sampling. And that's the end of the video.